Hello and welcome to a new episode dedicated to the NCS 5500 LAN cards. And more specifically today, I will talk about a new board we introduced to support lower speed interfaces, for instance, SFP ports and class C timing. And that's just after the intro. My name is Nicolas Février and I will be your host today. But this time again, I'm not alone to introduce this new hardware. For this task, I asked the support of the product manager in Cisco Maskell Infrastructure Group, who handled the launch of this new line card. And Bernard is clearly the best person to introduce it. Bernard, this virtual floor is yours. Hello everyone. I want to take the opportunity today to introduce you to our latest edition in our set of NCS5500 line cards, the NC55-32T 16Q4H-A line card. This line card is an aggregation line card for low speed interfaces and is meant to be a real addition to our portfolio and is not expected to replace any previous line card. It is extending the portfolio beyond what our NCS 5500 mod line card can do today. The mod line card can do up to 36 low speed interfaces whereas this new line card will support you with up to 48 interfaces plus four high-speed interfaces for backhaul. The main market for this new line card is aggregation and here especially in the mobile backhaul area. Because of its new support of Class C timing, which is a high-precision PTP timing application with very low latency, it is explicitly designed for applications in the new world of 5G mobile backhaul. But of course, any other aggregation application um, with that requires low speed interfaces is also supported. Now let's look at what this line card does. First of all, let's look at the ports. 32T, it has 32 1 slash 10 gig SFP plus ports. 16Q refers to 16 10 slash 25 gig SFP 28 ports. These ports do not support one gig. They are explicitly called 10 slash 25 gig ports. Why don't they support one gig? That is because of the special file chip we had to use in the design to allow us to offer a class C timing. And then there are the four Q ports. These are four QSFP28 ports that support 40 and 100 gig applications. The line card itself is only available in a non-SE version. There are no plans to come up with an SE version uh, because we do not think that this application requires SE capabilities. There may be some markets that require an SE application, but for this we still have the modular line card in its SE version. The line card will be supported under the iOS XR 7.2.2, which is already released in January, and the new iOS XR 7.3.1, which has been released end of last month. On the optics compatibility, I want to refer you to the TMG matrix that is hopefully widely known, and that is it. Thanks, Bernard, for this excellent description of the product. If I may, let me add a couple of basic extra points. Of course, it's not the first line card that can get you 10 gig and 25 gig ports. It was possible with breakout of QSFP Plus or QSFP 28 for many years. But in that case, you clearly didn't have the same flexibility. I know that certain people just don't want to hear about breakout and they have their legitimate reasons. Also, it was possible to do it via a QSFP to SFP adapter, but at the cost of a lot of bandwidth. Of course, it's possible to get native SFP ports via the mode line cards, but here it's at the expense of the port density and the timing capabilities. What the mode line cards offer first is the flexibility. This capability of mixing SFP, QSFP, GRAY, and CFP2 DWDM ports on the same board, but also the SC version when you need more FIB scale. This new line card is powered by its single Jericho Plus chipset. Remember Dash A in the product name. As Bernard said, no external TCAM with it. So considering the size of internet today, we don't support a full V4 plus V6 view in the FIB anymore. The card works in all types of chassis, 4, 8, and 16 slot, and with all fabric generations, V1 and V2. If you use a card in a chassis with J2 line cards, you will need to keep the default operational mode called compatible. 
You can click on this video above to understand the implications. Another important thing to know is relative to the 25 gigi ports. That's the ones in position 32 to 48. And I'm sure you are already used to this kind of configuration, since this behavior is the same on all NCS 5500 products offering SFP28. By default, they are in 25 gigi mode. That means if you plug a 10 gig SFP plus optic, it will not come up until you configure what we call a quad. That's a group of four ports you're forced to operate at 10 gigi. And the consequence is clear. The four ports must be at 10 gigi altogether now. Also, as mentioned earlier by Bernard, we don't support one gig or lower speed interfaces in these slots. Finally, this line card is the first in the NCS 5500 chassis to support Class C timing precision, but it's mandatory to have it equipped with a new RAL processor, the RP2E, that we presented in this video here. Several rules will apply when targeting Class C timing quality in a chassis, things like do not mix Class B and Class C line cards. But if you need more details, and it can be complex, I advise you contact your Cisco representative. And that's it for the introduction of the NC 5532T16Q4HA LAN card, the first 48 port SFP plus 4 port QSFP28 Class C capable board you can use in an NCS 5500 modular chassis. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.